I've already talked about threads in Rustling. Honestly, even though you seem to have liked the video, concurrency is a mess in that language. Even one problem is enough. The code becomes much more bloated because of how threads need to be handled. Today, we're going to kill a lot of birds with one stone by using GoRoutines, the way to get code to run concurrently in Golang. How exactly can a GoRoutine be used? Predictably, the second function runs only after the first one has finished. Now, to run these two at the same time by using GoRoutines, we need to simply add the keyword Go. If we run it, the functions technically run concurrently. But why is nothing printed out? Well, it's likely for main to end so early, the prints don't have enough time to happen. The most straightforward fix is to sleep just long enough for the prints to come out. And it works. But I think I don't need to explain that this is a suboptimal solution. A much safer approach is to use a so-called wait group, a way to wait for go routines to finish. Let's move to a different scenario to get this explained. We have this heavy loop based operation that sets each i an array to the square root of i, j times. Each i could be run in a goroutine because the order of iterations doesn't matter. On a paper, this looks like an optimization. A wait group works like this it has a counter that represents how many goroutines are currently running. When the counter is at zero, all of them are finished. First, we initialize the wait group itself, set the counter to how many elements that silly array is going to have, and run each i as a separate goroutine. Notice two things. The function is anonymous, which is just useful, and we run done here. Done decrements the counter when the goroutine has been executed, basically decrements what we added at the beginning. At the very end, wait blocks until the counter is at zero. Looks great. But does the optimization have any effect in practice? It really does. Let's talk about another reason Go is extolled for its concurrency features. We have these two functions endlessly running in the background and setting the number variable to 1 or 2. And here, we constantly print out the current value. The problem with this implementation is that the variable might be accessed by the two Go routines at the same time. And that's called a data race. In Rust, this problem can be solved by using rwlog, which allows only one writer at any point in time. Golang lets you use channels as a sort of synchronization between Go routines. So let's create a channel with the type of uint and pass it into our functions. To send a value into the channel, we can use this syntax, and the data race is gone. The way it works is that the sender is blocked until the receiver is ready, and the other way around. For example, here, a value won't be sent before the previous send is received. 